Right, first of all, I'm going to show you a plain luster with a brush, creating something similar to this, which was an original study done on a farce uh, in a rather conventional manner. But this was uh, a practice piece where I mixed the colours a little more. So I'm going to show you on here how I did it. I've used Mother of Pearl, Peacock Green, and then I've mixed the two colours in the brush to create an edging on there. Um, so you'll need Mother of Pearl, Peacock Green, and a couple of brushes, and I do keep a brush for Mother of Pearl, dedicated brush for Mother of Pearl, so that it doesn't get contaminated, because if that gets contaminated, your Mother of Pearl will turn blue. Um, so that's one for work on there. I've got a spare one here somewhere, which I can use for Mother of Pearl, dedicated there. Because at one stage I'm going to mix the two colours together. So we'll start off by using the peacock green for some leaves and we'll leave the flowers, angels Do you explain to everybody how you put the pattern on? On the edge? they might not do it the same as us, applying the outline. Oh. Right, first of all, to get the drawing onto your wear, whatever you're choosing to put it on, I've scribbled on the back using a Stabilo pencil or a graphite stick, a fine graphite, rubbed the dust off to make sure it's not too heavy, then I've stuck it down, traced over it with a red biro so that you know exactly what bit you've got traced on. Then when I've removed that, because I'm demonstrating on this, I've decided to outline it with a big biro, which be makes the outline become semi-permanent. And if you do that, it gives you quite a sharp outline and it all fires off. It may leave a slight trace, but basically the gold outline is going to cover any slight mark that it might leave, whereas carbon sometimes leaves a little more uh, of a mark into the luster wear. Once you've biroed, around the outline again, leave it to set. I know that sounds difficult, but the biro ink dries off and hardens off, and then you can actually rub off any carbon that is there, and you've then got a very clear outline to work on, which creates less problems. And now that's ready to go. Um, I would normally go over it just to make sure there's no dust settle on it, and maybe just a tiny damp touch just to remove any dust or traces of carbon and that's really ready to go. So we need a couple of brushes to work with. Again, I've got plenty of brushes here but we all have our favourites and the type of brushes I'm going to use here are squirrel. Pointed, probably a size number two. And I'm using that simply because it's got a very soft feel to it and I've got more flexibility and these there's a slightly larger one that's probably a size three so either of those and I'm going to first of all before I start work I'm going to put it into a drop of thinness just to make sure that there's no trace of any other colour and if there is it will come out and I've obviously used that for something else so I would clean that like that until it comes absolutely clean. And then I would damp it off like that until I was happy that the brush was really clean. So I'm going to actually use Peacock Green, take the top off and put that there. And I very rarely go straight onto the wear and straight on t with the brush and the, because it overloads it sometimes. So I would turn that round and paint it in the manner that I would normally when painting naturalistically. But in this instance, I actually want to mix it with a little bit of Mother of Pearl. So I've got two brushes this time, one dedicated to Mother of Pearl, as it's they both are. I want to mix the colours in the brush if I can get the top off, which I might need a bit of help. Got it. Okay, so in this instance, because it dries so quickly, I'm going to put a little bit out on there. Ready to go. Damp that off. And I'm going to put, it won't do any harm, I must admit, I've 
wiped off the mother of pearl. And that, and if you go like that, and put, that's peacock green, mother of pearl. I know then, in case you forget while you're doing something, just which colour you use. Wipe any marks off there, which I, I've splashed on. Okay, there we go. So, that's got the green in, and I want to mix these in the brush so that we get variations of shade. And a soft brush, use it, pressure of the brush to create a soft effect where you can wipe into painting in exactly the same manner as you would if you were using your normal paints painting towards you and using the pressure, can you see the brush strokes? Painting towards you using pressure of the brush and I must admit I do tend to go back occasionally if I've got time to, if it's not dried up until I've painted up to where I can't go any further. That's got a bit of fluff on there which is rather annoying so we'll get rid of it. The biro is just a guideline and then I can go a little bit paler for the turn back. A bit more, a little bit more mother of pearl in. Because don't forget, when you go around this, it's going to have gold enhancing the whole thing. So again, I'm using pressure of the brush to create brush strokes, which may show up on there. On that, neatening off as much as you can until you've created Right, okay, so there's another leaf. So I've started at the tip as far as I can. And if I got it over onto another part there, yes, you can mask out and use masking fluid, but I would probably stop and use a tiny cotton bud. But again, pressure of the brush. I don't know if you can see that, but if I use pressure of the brush, that gives you highlights when it's fired to give you a, a little bit more naturalistic appearance. So in, and a little bit of each, and mixed in the brush as you work, working as neatly as you can. And then you've got a turn back. That's, you can play about to some degree, but not too much because it starts to dry off very quickly. So we'll go for the turn back, turn it round, and again, paint that towards yourself using pressure of the brush and any little bit that may have strayed over can be worked into the design and it then has a slightly naturalistic flow to it there we go and I've actually gone over that a couple of times but it hasn't dried so we've got one two three leaves in one more and then that shows you roughly the method I've used and then I'll show doing the flowers because the, the rest is repetitive working backwards through the design pressure of the brush and you can see again you can create lines within the shape of the leaf which shows the way the leaf grows a little bit more paint more lustre I should say there we go and again it's still damp enough to be able to create a little bit more pressure to re-emphasise some of the flow of the leaf. Okay, so that's pretty repetitive, working through until you feel happy. And then I would do the mother of pearl last. So now we'll stop and clean the brush and I will use a separate brush for the mother of pearl. So I would take that out of there. Take off the excess, which is sticking hard to the tissue. But still, put some thinners in there until. And this is how I clean my brushes, taking off the worst with the thinners because the meths won't clean the brush properly. Put your top on your luster and make sure that's tight. Clean up after yourself. Now, then, because I've cleaned the worst of the thinners out, I can use either meths or turps to get the brush really clean. But I would always finish off by 
clean the brush again in thinner so that she takes anything out that would affect the luster in any way. There we go. That's really getting... So until the colour comes right out of the core of the brush, that's not really ready to use again. Clean up again. That would then go in the bin and another clean tissue. On there and finish off with a drop of thinness to give the brush a really good clean and that is then really ready to go. I do have separate brushes, separate colours, but we all have our favourites which we tend to use and that's one of my favourite shapes of brushes. So that's clean, ready to go and I would use that then to clean that up, get rid of that, I could turn it over and again Clean up. And I have to be honest, I'd probably finish off using a tissue with a bit of spit. And that will take off anything else. And I'd give myself clean tissue there, ready for the next one, which is going to be Mother of Pearl. And that's ready to use on there again. Make use, waste not, want not, and that's ready to go. Those can go out of the way, and here's my dedicated brush for Mother of Pearl, which nothing else goes in that at all, ever. And I would still make sure that it's going to be really clean, because it's had Mother of Pearl in and just hardened off a little bit. There's a trace left in, but it's only Mother of Pearl. So, again, that's how I would... Clean it, damp it off, and that's then ready to go with Mother of Pearl. And here it is, ready to go. If you're not careful, around the top it can get very dusty, so either clean it off or make sure none of that goes actually into your work because otherwise it will create a problem. So again, into there, and I do tend to go onto a tile so I don't flood what I'm painting. Work it out so I've got just enough and I paint towards myself. Right, okay, so I'll do the underneath one first because that one is nudging into that one and I can always clean out a little. So working towards myself, I would actually paint in the way that the flower would grow. And it's probably easier to skip up to there and then wipe off afterwards where it's gone into the other part of the design. Or you can use masking fluid to protect it. But soon as I always want everything done yesterday, I tend to take a chance. So pressure of the brush will give you a more naturalistic appearance, taking into effect the little twists and curls and they do have a rather distinctive appearance, uh, these flowers, which will be enhanced. I'm going to turn that round while I just put in a little colour into there. Working that in. And because it's a very soft brush, it gives much softer brush strokes. And that will, working quickly over there, that will bring it up to there. And if I wanted to, could go like that, take a little of that colour out and just literally redefine that line there. And that would be enough to put a highlight in so I could, when the barrier lines fire off, I'll be, still be able to see roughly where the um, pattern leaves the distinctive marks of the edge of the flower. So that would be enough for that. Put the brush down follow through with the next flower, but first of all, I'm going to move that so I don't knock it off. And this is where I'm probably taking a chance, and most of you will probably take a deep breath, but I would use a bit of spit, and I would just clean out that. And if it'll come out, then fine. If it's not going to, I would do that. Roll that so it doesn't bleed, and then take and clean that out just to take off the colour 
because it's drying and I want the flow of the lustre to work up that one too. So that would then go in the bin and away we go again with the next one. And if that's dried off, which you, oh, it's just starting to, put a little fresh mother of pearl out. Work it into the brush again and away you go with the next one. Now it's got a, an inside on this one so I'm going to do that first. Rather quickly working it in up and over the edge so that I can paint it the way the flower grows. That's done that. Then I can use that pressure of the brush working quite quickly because mother of pearl dries very quickly and you have to be really quick so it doesn't dry off on you. Whiz that round to there and turn that round and blend up and into there. Tuck it in and there's just a little, in fact if I do the back one first, the fact that it's such a soft brush gives you less problems and if you've gone over the line that doesn't matter, the biro is going to fire off. There we are, putting a little bit more pressure on so that we've got some Quite nice brush strokes, and there we go. That's on there. These are the buds, so those would also be done to Mother of Pearl, which you could shade on a little bit of green on a second fire, perhaps, on the tips of them here. And really, that's then I should fire this. There we go, and follow through obviously with the other buds. Normally I would finish all the leaves off uh, before I started on this. But really as we're pushed for time, that's how I would there, uh, and then I would finish off all the rest. Done rather quickly, but then we clean the brush really thoroughly again and clean up really thoroughly.